Welcome to Flock Talk, Flock Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. Visit us today at pinkflamingoproductions.com. Pink Flamingo Productions. And now, Flock Talk. Well, hello, all you happy flockers out there, and welcome to Flock Talk. My name is Craig Hart, and I'm here with my dynamic co-host, Sarah Hannon. How are things going over your way, Sarah? Um, they're going. They're going well. Dynamic. Um, it's a busy. Yes, it's, I'm very dynamic. I'm a <laughs> uh, high. I have high dynamic range. <laughs> I am the most sought after television set <laughs> at Best Buy. <laughs> I remember going to Best Buy to purchase my very first television as an adult. Well, actually, first television ever because when I was a kid, we didn't have television. My parent, my family didn't have a TV, and so I bought my first television as an adult, and it was really exciting. It was still these massive units with terrible resolution. I miss the one. We had a TV that, oh my God, my age is showing, that when you, you know, you had to pull out the button to turn it on and push the button in to turn it off. And it would like, the the screen would like collapse into this little dot <laughs> because it was, and it was warm and staticky. Yes. And like that little white dot would stay yep. for a few seconds. And I, I would actually turn it on to turn it off and it it has to really warm up, so like I would, I would, I was too impatient to wait <laughs> for the screen to be warm enough. My wife had there uh, when she was growing up. They had one where uh, you had to hit it on the top to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've tried that with people. They're less <laughs> they're less appreciative to being hit on the top of the head. Oh, thank goodness this is remote. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Well, we'll move on from there before I get charged with some sort of assault and battery or something or other. So anyway, when I kick us off with a bio there. Yes, I am so excited today to welcome Austin Gray. A ballet dancer, opera singer, and musical theater actor, Austin Gray applies her performance expertise to a flourishing career in narration and coaching. Her vocal proficiency, as well as her command over accents and dialects, allows her to create authentic and versatile characters. Austin's voice can also be heard under the pseudonym Lily Drake. She loves to narrate a wide scope of genres, including, but definitely not limited to, young adult, sci-fi, contemporary, historical romance, fantasy, inspirational, nonfiction, biography, children's literature, and mystery thriller. It's not limited to those, but those might be all of them. <laughs> Austin has earned a master's degree in ethics, and when she isn't narrating, she loves great food, fine coffee, yoga, and spending time with her family. Thank you so much for being here, Austin. Thank uh, you for having me. This is fun. Yeah. So you are clearly a highly educated and sophisticated woman. Why are you here on this podcast? Uh, well, Craig said I had to, or he would release <laughs> certain information. Oh, that sounds That's like a story. <laughs> Got some dirt. <laughs> no. Oh, my. Uh, with all of your various skills in performing arts, where, how did you come to audiobooks? Uh, very much by accident, actually. So I was pregnant at the time. And I was like a whale. I was eight and a half months pregnant. And I was actually in an opera. Uh, well, it was the Pearl Fishers. And I was playing an unsuccessful geisha. I was in a supermarket and freaking out because it was my first pregnancy and we do that. <laughs> we freak out. And uh, the lady that I was talking to said, you know, I really love your voice. I would pay you to talk to me. You should check that out. And so I did. And I went on ACX and the rest is history. That's how it got started. <laughs> didn't know anybody who did it. Didn't have any connections. Didn't have any coaching. I had nothing. I just did it. And um, and luckily it worked out. You know, this just shows that mm. taking the advice of random strangers is really underrated. I like to, I like to think it guys start, got started uh, with a little bit of moxie and a lot of desperation. And that's that's what started the whole nice. thing. Yeah, definitely. Well, one of your passions with narration is vocal <laughs> care. What are some common mistakes narrators make regarding just taking care of their instrument? Uh, the ones I come across the most actually has to do more with confidence. Mm. And I think I was just talking to another narrator the other day about imposter syndrome and how I think that's false. It's a false idea. It's it's an other idea. And um, mostly it's just relaxing and being OK with how you sound. So um, taking off the headphones and just giving a performance 
it's when we start to overanalyze and start to dissect and judge our own voices that we start getting into vocal problems the most. So it's more of a head game than it is a physical game, really. How do the acting skills and techniques from the stage compare with the acting used in audio narration? Do they transfer over or are there like big differences, tiny differences between them? Yes, and I think uh, they're... Um, ah, improv. <laughs> some stuff doesn't carry over. I think the hardest, yeah, improv is great. That'll do it. Um, mm-hmm. I, a lot of a lot of my training was in high art, and so, so ballet and opera. It's very, you know, it takes a long time to hone those specific skills, and everything is just big, and you're using your body, and you're projecting a lot, and then you get into the booth, and none of that applies. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that kind of goes out the window. So I think. The hardest thing for me in that transition was just learning to sit still, which I still don't really do at all. So you just kind of wear light clothing and hope for the best. <laughs> but I still get pickups where it's like there's a shushing noise or there's there's a cracking noise. Like, what is this noise? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's me like embodying another, you know, <laughs> fake person. And all of this stuff is happening. I mean, even right now, I'm the, I don't, Craig, I can see you laughing and my hands are just going everywhere <laughs> just trying to talk. Sorry, but, I, was, um, I was flailing. That doesn't transfer very well. <laughs> I have actually hit my head on the microphone <laughs> many times. <laughs> so it's just because like somebody's supposed to be like hunched over. They got like a, you know, there's always a physical manifestation of what we're doing. And then like I'll hit my head against the mic and I'm like, oh rats i gotta go back and do that again and then uh you know with audiobooks it's all about subtlety and so taking all of that energy and just redirecting it into a different different medium i get asked a lot of how to get started i think there's not a lot of transparency in our work i mean at least i tend to hold back um, how i felt when i got started or exactly you know how i started because it's a little bit embarrassing, you know, like nobody wants to be a a new person, I guess. So I think um, Mm. there are so many different ways to get started. I don't think there's any one wrong way necessarily, uh, but I'd have to to do a deep dive on that and really think about it. You've done a lot of different characters throughout all of the projects you've done with audiobooks and on the stage. What is your favorite kind of character to play? Uh, For stage, it's, I mean, I'm never cast as the ingenue anyway, so I always play at least two different characters, and it's always the crazy aunt or the (laughs) bossy sister or, you know, that sort of thing. So that's really fun. I feel like I fit into those really well for some reason. But um, for audiobooks, it's just, I don't know. There have have been so many. Um, One that I keep bringing up is... um, I had to play Athena in a Gods and Goddesses mashup fantasy series called the Scarlet Thread series and um, by D.S. Murphy, I think it was. And she was just warmongering and kind of crazy. I don't know if I can say that, but she was just kind of nutty. And I really enjoyed playing her because I could use uh, a full range. Um, because huh. not every character gets to gets to use that full range. And with her, she just had so many different vibes that I was like, I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff out there and see if it sticks and see what the author says. And he never said anything, so I'm assuming <laughs> my portrayal was okay. But she was really fun just because I got to use all the, all the skills. That sounds yeah. like a fun embodiment to try for. <laughs> Yeah, and it um, literally was like, oh, no, I'm going to do this. I hope it doesn't, I hope it's not terrible. I feel like most of our job, at least most, I, f- I don't know about y'all, but I feel like my job is mostly, I'm going to try this thing, and I don't know if it's going to go over well, but we'll see what happens. Do you guys go out on a limb a lot, or are you just seasoned pros? I tend to play it safe, and I th- actually think that's a weakness of mine. It depends on the on the book. I think how how free I feel exploring, experimenting. Yeah. If it's like a duel and and I'm and I've got a co-narrator who's probably narrating the same character <laughs> in other chapters, <laughs> probably not going to experiment too hard. But um, unless we've like come up with like you know 
you know, this guy's from South Boston and he whines a lot. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, I'd hate to do that character actually. But anyway, um, yeah, I do like the, the ones where I'm, where I'm basically on my own. I like to, I like to go out a little more, but I think I could push yeah. it further. Uh, what sort of advice would you give to someone just starting out? Take your time and trust your gut. It really depends on how and where they're starting from. So I do a little bit of coaching, and I had one client who was a school teacher, and they were just starting out. They wanted to do something as, you know, as a retirement um, job. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we did was just figure out what their life, what they wanted their life to be. Because this job can really take over your whole life if you're not careful. And so the first thing we did was set some boundaries. Um, so I think it just really depends smart. on where you're coming from and, yeah, where you're coming from and what you want to do and where you'd like to be. And then leave that open to change, too. Because a year into audiobooks, my goals were completely different. My first year was just just make money. Just get, you know, don't do any more royalty shares. Don't do any more of those or like circle back around to them if you want. But like right now, you've got to pay some bills and that's it. And so that was my main goal. And I think I think that's why there's just such a wide variety of stuff, because I just would take anything and everything. And now it's a little bit different. Um, now I can think about who I want to work with and who I want to work for and what projects I can mentally take on. Um, I tend to get cast in really dark uh, teen angst uh, novels. I can't imagine why. I can't imagine. <laughs> anyway, um, like I guess I sound like that all the time, uh, probably. Um, <laughs> but uh, I can't. I can't do those back to back, yeah. right? I can't have so much death and destruction one right after the other. I have to. I have to mix it up a little bit. So. Knowing that I have that freedom is really cool. Um, but yeah, it just it just depends. You mentioned <laughs> narrating highly emotionally charged projects. And so you know how emotionally draining those can be. What are some tips to practicing self-care as a narrator while you're doing these kinds of produ projects? Oh, that's a really good question. So apart from vocal care, because the emotion of the book can sort of um, take over. I guess you can you can get caught up in what you're doing and you forget that you, you need to have a functioning voice in order to perform. But um, for me, it's not having super serious books back to back. So it'll be a drama and then a comedy and then a drama and then like a lighthearted romance. And, and that kind of variety um, helps me a little bit uh, just not be in that place all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is taking a lot of breaks, talking to a lot of people. So I'll record for 50 minutes and I'll take a 10 minute break and I might have to text someone or call someone and just just get my feet back in reality a little bit more um, so that I don't get swept away. But sometimes in the moment when you're performing, you, you can get, you, you allow yourself to do that. Just create a home base for you to touch, touch back to whatever that is for you. So, and that looks different for every person, much mm -hmm. less any artist, to have um, a little bit of a foundation in reality that you know is a safe place for you and you can recoup. So um, sometimes that's just me walking around the art museum on a Saturday morning um, because I need different input or, uh, you know, just something different to look at um, and different people to talk to. So, you know, everyone's different, but yeah, just having that home base. Well, that wraps up all of our main questions, mm -hmm. but we do have a bonus section that we like to call Hot Six. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Buckle up, listeners. It's time for Hot Six. <sighs> Question one. What is the most overrated book you've ever read? The Divergent series. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't hear what you said because it blanked out. <laughs> oh, you did? <didn't>? No. <laughs> so now you have to repeat yourself. Oh, my gosh. I don't know how this is going to turn out, guys. Um, the uh, the Divergent series. <laughs> I still didn't I, hear it. I liked I'm certain so parts of it. I just felt like... <laughs> No! <laughs> <laughs> 
the universe is against this. It, the universe does not want me to say this out loud. How about that? <laughs> All right. Uh, question two. What famous literary work have you never read but feel like you should have? Anything by Tolstoy. I've read a little bit of The Brothers. little, And uh, uh, yeah, I think I just totally showed my ignorance there. But yeah, I have not read anything by Tolstoy. And um, I just feel like it's so heavy. Maybe if I have a string of comedies, Mm -hmm. I can, you know, read some Anna Karenina at night or whatever. But yeah. If you could be any animal for one day, what would you be? I don't know. It depends on the day. Um, I think a giraffe. Ooh. I, a giraffe, yeah. I can, you know, it's the the grace of ballet and the long neck and the, oh, that's, that's beautiful. Question four. What is your biggest grammatical pet peeve? Putting prepositions at the end of sentences. And it's not because I... Uh, consciously don't like it, it's that my brain will correct it as I'm reading. (laughs) Mm. Yes, it will. It'll automatically do it. I just got done with a pickup packet. A lot of them were (laughs) where the author had purposefully um, ended the sentence with a preposition and my brain flipped the word automatically. (laughs) Like it just, it just wants that direct object right at the end all the time. And my, my brain won't get over it. My subconscious is like, no. Okay, looking back over your entire lifetime, what is your most embarrassing favorite song? Mm, I don't know if this is embarrassing, but I think anything by Britney Spears on her first album. I don't know if I'd necessarily be embarrassed by that, but I just remember in college, we were studying classical music and classical singing, and we were surrounded by beautiful vocalists and musicians, and it was just very um, sophisticated. And my best friend in college and I would drive down to this bakery, get a slew of baked goods and sodas, so super healthy. And we would blast Britney Spears so loud and just sing at the top of our lungs. And it was just, it was so fun. It was so much fun. It was classy. (laughs) Question six. What is one thing you wish you could uninvent, as in it no longer exists? Um, man, I don't know. I know that's a lame answer, but I honestly, nothing's coming to mind. No, that's fine. We'll take it. All right. Well, that wraps up (laughs) Hot Six. Uh, Austin, thank you so much for joining us on Flock Talk. I really appreciate your time. This was fun. I enjoy you guys. You've been listening to Flock Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. This podcast is produced by Pink Flamingo Productions. Editing by Craig Hart. Visit us today at pinkflamingoproductions.com. Flock Talk.